everybody. My name is Karen Pryor. I'm a physical therapist with a bunch more initials and credentials after that. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is we've designed a primitive reflex certification course that you can take to gain a CPRCS after your name and people will search you out for treating their patients, whether pediatrics or adults. This uh, reflex course helps your patient create optimal function because many times if a child or an adult has a stroke, they will then again demonstrate primitive reflexes because anything that happens in the cortex, you may see lower centers show up to go to work. I'll discuss how the brain and the brainstem are involved in primitive reflex uh, demonstrations and why they interfere with movement and why they are driven to drive different actions of the body. Now, to enter the brain stem and the brain, the only thing that goes in is sensation. So we'll teach you methods, easy, inexpensively. You don't have to buy special equipment or wear special, you know, glasses or wear special clothes or anything like that. You will be able to treat your patients easily and um, teach them home programs that are also uh, very plain and easy to follow. I do suggest that you record on the parent's phone, uh, PT phone home program or OT phone home program. So the parent can take home the exercises that you designed for their child. We are going to uh, also demonstrate how vision is an important tool in treating primitive reflexes, that um, it works to elicit a primitive reflex and also helps you integrate and put in the background that primitive reflex so it doesn't interfere with their uh, active movement. We're going to cover cerebral palsy, high tone, low tone, traumatic brain injuries. We're going to combine it with humor so it's easy to swallow and you have a good time listening to the lectures because we want to deliver a lecture like we would like to attend. So believe you me, with our years of experience, we found that it's easier to have a little sweetness go with uh, serious information. Now, Dr. Gibbs, um, Verlicia Gibbs, is going to teach you how to recognize and apply different treatment techniques to the older child and children in the school system, which is a completely different venue than in your own clinic or a hospital or in homes. And uh, different equipment that you can use, different activities that you can do to progress uh, the children in those venues. The uh, CPRCS certification is also going to teach you how the nervous system is the leader of the body, not the motor system. The nervous system dictates what happens to the motor system. And like I said before, if a higher cortical area is compromised, damaged, you have an insult, a trauma, then the lower center, the mammal brain or the brain stem is going to show up and start demonstrating more primitive reflexes that interfere with active movement and learning. We'll review the central nervous system anatomy in a very fun way and a very uh, easy way that it actually sticks in your mind as related to function. Because if you remember trying to memorize, memorize, I say, the central nervous system, the cranial nerves and all that, it was just hard, wasn't it? It was just tough. So we want to teach you in a way that you go, of course, I can teach parents with these documents. And one of the diagrams was designed by Michael Foster and we'll give you the email and everything. But for example, the limbic system is like the lyric system. So if you combine different activities with music, then it's all good. The uh, If you ever want to get that drawing, you can uh, contact her, micah.snapdragon at gmail.com and have a conversation with her and how you want to apply the drawing, if it's for teaching or something, a book. 
Now, the lower centers of the nervous system are where the survival mechanisms are. And that's why you have asymmetric tonic neck that's like a push away, or you have symmetric tonic neck that the child will be in more of a fetal position to uh, hide from danger. But when these threats are not really needed, then we need to put the primitive reflexes in the background because asymmetric tonic neck will uh, needs to go away by four to six months so the child can bring the hand to the mouth to feed themselves. But if it doesn't go in the background, the child cannot bring the hand to the mouth. So we have a problem. Varlicia and I will lead you through case studies, give you examples, show you photos, show you videos. So you go, hey, that's how that works. And now I see what you're talking about. It will make it stick in your mind so that you can help make it stick in parents' minds or patients' minds so they can apply the information as well. We'll give you step-by-step -step instructions. And let me tell you, this course is by far the most feasibly inexpensive course I have ever seen. Some courses uh, that are integration of primitive reflexes are thirty to fifty thousand dollars in two years of training. This course will give you what you need to actually treat the central nervous system where the primitive reflexes arise. Let's see what else we're going to teach you. You need little to no equipment. You probably already have all the equipment you need. You may need a vibrator. You may need a light that's red. I mean, hey, it, a noise making uh, toy. And most people have those around places. You know, it's stuff. We're going to tell you stuff that you already have because I am thrifty and downright cheap. So I want to use what the parents already have in the house or have very minimal purchases because they are already coming home with a bill of a million dollars if they were in PICU, NICU, or in a trauma unit. So if you will join Varlicia Gibbs and myself for this course, we will welcome you and teach you all the information on the level one that you need to know, and you'll be immediately able to go treat children the next day or even adults, like I said, because the central nervous system is the central nervous system. Adults just have more rutted and deep pathways, but you can reroute those through neuroplasticity. I look forward to meeting you and hearing from you. You also have a one-on-one -on -one with me with two case studies. We'll discuss that. Also, if you need to uh, troubleshoot a patient that you feel like you're just not getting any headway, no pun intended, then uh, I will help you uh, directly. And there is no extra charge for this at all. It is included in the course. So sit back, relax, and let's start learning. Take care, and I hope to see you soon. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Oh, look. Uh, I'll be glad to address your questions if you got some. I love questions. All questions are relevant. Oh, you had some questions coming ahead of time. Lovely. Yeah, I don't have any new questions posted on my screen. Uh, integrate the startle reflex in young adults with cerebral palsy. Uh, one thing you want to do is isolate what's triggering that. You want to make sure that it's the startle reflex, not the moral reflex. These are two different things. The moral reflex is if the eyes look up or the neck extends, the arms will come back. That's more common than startle. The startle reflex is with a loud noise. And one thing that you do with startle reflex is slowly desensitize them. You get them in a very relaxed state and then you let them make the noise or them turn on the lights or them give you feedback that 
uh, what's triggering it. If they are empowered to uh, make the noise or fiddle with the lights, they're going to have less of a reaction. And you go back to, well, you can't tickle yourself. It's if you're in power of a something, a stimulus that uh, stimulates a startle reflex, it will be less and then it will go, it will extinguish. But like I said, it may be the moral reflex. If it is the moral reflex that looks similar, but it is not the same, then you bring their eyes down below eye level and their arms will come down. Let's see. Oh, a lot of our staff is trained at MNRI. I'm interested in more active approach. What would you teach? The MNRI uh, was a program written for a dissertation. And there was not a lot of contact with patients uh, before that. And th this program does not have passive movement. When you have a patient that is demonstrating uh, asymmetric tonic neck, for example, so head turned down the extended arm, and it is triggered by vision. If you passively move a head to test or you passively move a body part to start integration, it is that's a completely different system. That uh, our system integrates vision, vestibular, and it goes in information through the brainstem where the primitive reflexes live. So it's a much easier program to use. The uh, primitive reflexes are integrated more quickly, whereas MNRI and uh, other programs of that nature are not written by physical therapists or occupational therapists or speech therapists. It's uh, written by an individual that actually is hands off. And um, they designed passively moving parts. And, you know, it really doesn't direct vision, which when you direct vision, you're going to see more of the primitive reflexes show up because it's during active movement that we need to put the uh, primitive reflexes in the background, for example, handwriting or putting on their clothes or feeding themselves. I hope that helped that answer. Hope I answered your question. Okay, looks like that's for questions. Okay, okay. If you have more questions, my email address is k-a-r-e-n-p-r-y-o-r-p-t at gmail.com. I am happy to answer questions. I just actually love them. Thanks for your time. Hope to see you soon.